Good morning. Welcome, welcome to Ask Ashley, our weekly live here on YouTube where you ask me your crochet business questions and I answer them for you. I was trying, good morning. I was trying to play around with the techie techie to see if I couldn't embed a poll into our live today and I, I cannot. Um, but what I can do is show you how to find it. It's on, did you know that YouTube has a community tab? I'm gonna go to my channel. I'm gonna share my screen. So, okay, that's a weird, that's a weird angle. Here we go. That's better. So that's my analytics. That's not supposed to be, whatever. Let's go to the community tab right here. And then I put a poll. And it's already been four votes. It's only on the community tab, which is not ideal. And I was going to share it, but then it looks like you can only share it onto your community tab. There's no link for me to grab and put in the comments. So if you guys want to go do the poll, of, I was going to make it like just a Ask Ashley fun thing for just for us, but YouTube isn't working with me, so I don't have the choice. Um, but if you want to let me know which pattern you want me to release next, we can do either a another gift pocket. We got some really cute ones that haven't been posted yet, like the mushroom and the fish. Tilly keeps eating them, so I have to either remake them or not have them anymore. She ate my Yoda one. She likes the ones with the puff paint on them. Um, so here's a fish in the making. And then I think she ate my mushroom one. Here's a mushroom one without the puff paint. Here's a mushroom one with the puff paint. Here's another fish. This one doesn't have its top fin. I was working on the design. Let's see, what else do we have? That one's already live, that one's already live. She ate, she ate a couple of them. We have a little gnome. He's a cutie, little cutie patootie. I also was working on Tall man face and round man face. Those are the words we're going to go with. Because of copyright infringement. I'm coming. I'm coming. I think they're in this wet bag. I got wet bags for days. Wet tanner, you're going to get smushed, honey. There you go. Okay. How fudge nuggets. Get down, Tilly. Okay, so to get down, Tilly. I swear these dogs are driving me crazy. We got three, and three is too many. Okay, so here is the orca that I was working on that I'm obsessed with. I really need to finish this one just for myself. Um, but this is short, round face, man. Okay, this is round faced man with his little hat. And his little ears. And then I need to put on his face. And then this is tall faced man. See where we're going with that? Tall and round faces. Um, and then I think one of these was going to be, um, I'm not sure what that was. Maybe, I don't remember. Anyways, fun stuff. Fun stuff. So there's all the gift pockets like ideas. I've got a couple more probably that Tilly ate. She ate my rocket. She ate my rocket ship. She's a bad girl. And then we have, hang on, the cactus purse. Uh, it's too late, Debbie. It's too late for Christmas in July, but hopefully I'll have them available come Christmas time. This is the cactus purse, and it's just almost big enough to hold an iPhone, or at least this size iPhone, which I'm not even sure. Look at there. And if you made a longer strap, or what about the, the little the ones that wear them like up high? Maybe, maybe if that's your jam, you could stick with the kid size. Put your phone right where you need it to be, right? With this size strap, I don't know. It's up to you. But it fits in there nicely and the way I've got it organized, stop it, you can get in trouble. The way I've got it added together, his little arms are accessible. So you could stick 
like your Aldi quarter down in there or some dollar bills in the arms, in the cactus arms. So well, let me know in the poll if you want to uh, check that out. You see where we're at? Let's refresh it. Boop, 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 boop. Seven votes. Oh, Cactus Purse is leading. Cactus Purse is leading. So I thought that would just be something fun that we could do here together. And it kind of backfired, but it's working a little bit. So we'll see what you guys come up with. I need you guys to uh, hype me up for one of these patterns because I am. We had VBS at my church last week, I guess, and it just depleted me fully. Um, also, I think it just happened, you know, like in a female cycle, you got each week is like a different phase. I think I'm in the crap phase. Um, so I've also been struggling because of that. Uh, but I'm starting to slowly get back into rhythm. Also, I hurt my finger and I'm afraid to even try to crochet. So it hurts really dang bad. That's why I said fudge nuggets when because I banged it. It's frustrating that it's so little and it hurts so bad. But that is where we're at. Now I want to just keep refreshing the poll. I'm very interested. I'll let you know. I know I know it's not sharing. It takes forever to refresh. 10 votes, 50-50. Ooh! And then, of course, if another gift pocket wins, then I'll have to be like, which gift pocket do you want? <laughs> so then we'll have another poll shop. I'm going to show you else, something else good news that's happening today. My yesterday was my Etsy shop. Um, Six year anniversary, and we celebrated by putting all crochet patterns 30% off, all of them, even the bundles. And the bundles are already 20% off. So then you get 30% off of the bundle price. So, very the lowest my patterns will ever be, ever. So, you can check that out at a craftyconcept.com forward slash shop. I believe it will be through the rest of the day. After today, it like probably midnight Eastern Standard Time is when it will disappear. So if you have had your eyeballs on any of these crochet patterns and you want them at a very low rate, so you can print them out and put them in your binders or just save them digitally so you don't have to look at all the ads that are on my blog because that is how I make money with the free patterns. That's how I support my family. Um, you can get the ad-free versions for very, very cheaply. And even if you don't want to buy any today, if you would like to share about the sale for your crochet friends to be able to grab inexpensive patterns, um, that would be awesome too. So let's hop in to our questions and see what we got going on over here conversationally. First one is from Tara and she says, good morning, Ashley, good morning, Tara. Can you talk about pattern for Etsy? Yes, I can. So she is talking about Etsy's pattern site option and not crochet pattern, capital P pattern. And if you look at my website, this is patternbyetsy.com. This is an Etsy patterns site. Um, so if you go to the homepage, also this should go to, um, I don't know if it's going to work. There's no shirts there. Oh, there is. Okay, so share this tab instead. I don't. I don't post this. Post about this. Um, but if you click that, that uh, banner. So share this. Tab, this banner. If you click this banner, it's going to take you to this page, um, which is from this creator here, a girl in Kentucky, and we've got some shirts here that I forgot about. Um, I probably, you don't have, like, I'm going to eventually add merch back to my shop eventually whenever things happen, but that's, you get to link your banner. That's my point. So if you wanted to link to something else, like follow me on Instagram and link to your Instagram or sign up for your free gift and link to your email list, you can do that with the banner. There's like five or six different themes that you can use to make your Etsy pattern site. And then it syncs perfectly with your Etsy listings. So if you have an Etsy shop, you can create an Etsy patterns site, lickety split, lickety split, all of your inventory, all of your pictures, all of your videos, all of your descriptions, uh, shipping profiles, sections, all of it is gonna be saved and it will just transfer perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, very handy, very quick. 
okay, why would you want to do this? The way Etsy, the Etsy pattern site charges us, the sellers, is different than how they charge on Etsy.com. So on Etsy.com, you pay the, I did, I did put lavender. I don't have frankincense, but I did put lavender. On Etsy.com, you pay the six and a half percent Etsy fee, the 20 cent listing fee, and then approximately 3.5% transaction fee, I think, approximately, depending upon where you live. I can't remember if that's even right. Off the top of my head, it's a lot of numbers. I'm not a number guy. I have to like look at it. But you pay all these things, right? In the patterns site, okay, back to Etsy. You pay those things, but only if you make a sale. You, the only thing you have to pay before you make a sale is the 20 cent listing fee. Everything else doesn't get charged until you sell something. On the Etsy pattern site, this is Etsy, this is Etsy pattern, you pay $15 a month no matter what. You don't pay the 6.5% Etsy fee and you don't pay the 20 cent listing fee. You do pay the transaction fee, but you don't have to pay the Etsy fee or the listing fee. To the best of my knowledge, people who shop through your pattern site can still leave a review in your Etsy shop. If you have recently purchased through my pattern site and want to let me know if you got, I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to go in under Gabe's email and buy something and go through it and see if it's, if you're able to do it. Um, fun with care. The sunflower sticker is um, out of stock. Not it, not as a freebie or, or anything. It's completely out of stock. Did you see that somewhere? Shouldn't be, shouldn't be anywhere. It's out of stock. I don't have any more of those. Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, who should have an Etsy pattern site? If you, so here's the, the biggest down, downfall of having an Etsy pattern site. You are 100% responsible for driving traffic to your, your pattern site. Etsy.com's search box does not lead to your patterns site there's no search box to get people to your site you anytime you give a link to any of your products or to shop with you you use your etsy pattern site you're going to treat it the same as if you had a shopify account instead of um an etsy pattern like it's this is your off etsy shop for all marketing purposes now it is still technically on etsy and if Etsy.com was to disappear tomorrow, your Etsy shop would disappear and your Etsy patterns shop would disappear. So it's very good to get off Etsy. But creating a pattern site is extremely fast. And then if you are directing a lot of traffic to your shop, you can start directing those people to your patterns site and not pay as many fees. And then you need to do a really good job at letting your audience know they need to go to the shop on your website or if you don't have a website. So mine, if you go to myacraftyconcept.com, oh, fudge, sorry. Okay, so if you go to acraftyconcept.com and click on the shop tab, it will take you directly to my patterns site. I also have a URL saved that just goes to a craftyconcept.com forward slash shop. And that will also take you directly to my patterns site. If you do not have a website already, you can get a domain, a craftyconcept.com and forward it to this, a craftyconcept.patternsbyetsy.com. And then if I type in a craftyconcept.com, it's going to immediately go to this website instead. That's just easier for you to say and easier for your customers to remember. The easier things that are, the more sales you will always get, always. Um, so, and then you have a few options over here. We have the shop button, you have the about button, and that's all my bio from inside of my Etsy shop. And then an events tab, which is awesome if you do markets they did this specifically for people who do markets you can put them here um this was from like 2018 maybe 2019 it's a very long time ago and then the cart if they are shopping um, on the shop tab you can also get to your sections this way um, so this is just one of the 
templates. They have other shop themes that you can look at, but this is a very good thing if you are driving your own traffic to your Etsy shop. If you have a Pinterest strategy and you are pinning your Etsy listings, which you should be doing if you're not, you would instead pin the listings on your pattern site. You would never ever direct anybody to your Etsy shop if you have an off Etsy or an Etsy patterns site because you get charged differently through the patterns site and it's cheaper per sale as long as you're getting regular sales. If you're not making $15 a month on the traffic that you drive to your shop, maybe don't get a pattern site yet. But if you are, and if you're driving, you can look at your Etsy analytics and see how many people were brought to you from direct traffic like that you gave the link and it came directly to your shop. And if it's like 50%, maybe open a pattern site and let people know we've created a new shop, make it a whole deal, uh, take people along the journey with you, let them choose the template that you use, all the things, make it a whole experience for your people. They will love it. It would be fun. This is all like black and white, which isn't super a crafty concept, but I will say it matches my uh, packet packet bundle and pack and even my gift, my product tag. So, I mean, it kind of works, right? I didn't do that on purpose. These came way after I created the pattern site, but it, it kind of works like everything be black and white. So uh, perfect. Also, this sticker went live. I don't think I've sold any yet. And it's clear. The background is not white. The black background is clear. Can you see? I thought that was really neat. Okay. Um, great question. Laura with Tara. Great question. Um, I need to make a whole video on Etsy patterns and like how to do it, how to sign up all the things. Um, okay. Let's, we have a question here that's still on the patterns topic. So I'm just gonna, oh, it's Tara. Do the Etsy ads link to the pattern site as well? I would say no. I don't know, but like from a business standpoint, it wouldn't be smart for Etsy to do that unless they got money from, I don't think so. I think the Etsy ads only show up in the Etsy search. So no, I don't think they work for your um, pattern site. Also, if your friend is an Etsy affiliate and they link to your stuff in your Etsy shop as affiliate links regularly, they cannot link to your pattern site. It has to be on Etsy.com. Also, the pattern site, there are no rules. There are less rules as to what you're able to sell. So I could sell yard sale stuff from my shop. I mean, from my room and keep it on my pattern site only and not on Etsy.com. Unless it's vintage, which some of it might be. And it'd be okay. It's not against Etsy's rules. You're able to sell more variety of things on your Etsy pattern site because it's not on Etsy, if that makes sense. Um, I do try to remember to encourage my audience to go to the shop on my website instead of, I try not to say go to my Etsy shop, but people still shop on my Etsy shop that I sent them to go buy something and then they went to my Etsy and they go to Etsy.com and they search a crafty concept. Etsy.com are my biggest stat, my biggest searched keyword that lands people in my shop is a crafty concept. They go to Etsy, they search a crafty concept, they click on my shop, they buy the thing I was just talking about. Instead of going to a craftyconcept.com, clicking on the shop tab and buying it from there. Um, I don't know how else... I don't know how to train people to start doing it differently unless it's part of your regular content and you you talk about it regularly, like not every day because that would be aggravating, but on the regular, just like you would have to talk about it regularly if you had weird spelling in your name, your business name, like if you were crochet with a K instead of C. So maybe you were crafty crochet and it was two Ks instead of two Cs. You'd be like, it's craftycrochet.com with K's instead of C's. You'd have to say it over and over and over and over and over in order for people to even remember it. That needs to come out of your mouth every single time you say your business name because it's unique and different and people will not remember. Tilly, I know you ain't getting fixed and neat my crochet. Get out of the closet. You have no reason to be in the closet. Okay. Um, I hope I answered 
the what is the point of a pattern site question. I hope I answered that for you. If you have more questions about it, let me know. Okay, thank you, Tara. Let's go back to the questions page. Tara, again, if I have a color palette, can I change up or am I set once I choose something? Can I change? You can always change it, Tara. You can always change any decision that you make ever for your business. Nothing is permanent. Everything is fluid when it comes to running a crochet business. Now, you said trends and seasons. So maybe you use pastel colors in your shop, okay? Pastel baby colors, right? And it's Christmas time, and you're thinking, I want to add some Christmas stuff. Um, I wonder if I've got a picture of it. You can still use pastel colors. Who, said, who makes those? Um, she was just... She was just on my, my thing. Oh, what is her name? Oh, the, the reel that I just did with all the people. And she showed her, her video. Remember my USA reel that I did with a lot of people? She was in that one. Let me see if I can find her. Because she makes Santa Claus pillows. Is this one? Nope. Is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Nope. I must be getting close. Remember the USA reel where we all had different crochet patterns that were USA themed? Where the heck is it? Maybe it's for 4th of July. What is this one's date? This six weeks ago. June. Okay. June. Way, way too far. So maybe, which is one? Uh, June 23rd. When you get to July, maybe it's this one. Aha! Okay, um, I think it's, is it her? I think it's her. I'm going to share my screen in a second. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Um, I need to switch to this tab instead. Okay, so champagne and waffles. Okay, right here. So she's got a little pastel green Santa hat or a pink Santa hat instead of the traditional red. See how she's got red? But she's she's also done it with pink. Because that would be, if you had a pastel shop, you could do pastel pink as your Santa color instead of red. And it will be on brand, but not only on brand, because the people who follow you and buy all of your stuff and they're obsessed with your brand, they like pastel colors or they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be an, an active customer, right? If they didn't like, because you sell pastel colors. So if they didn't like pastel colors, so see this guy is different than this one. It's subtle, but it it's different. So if you wanted to do, stick with your color family if you want to. If you want to go wild and add red in your pastel shop, try it out and see how it does. But if you want to stay on brand, for the sake of brand awareness and just something that you know your ideal customer likes because they're already buying these colors anyway, choose, stick with your color family. So if you have a boho color family, maybe you would use like a wine color instead of fire engine red, right? If you have, um, and same thing, like instead of bright yellow, you would use mustard yellow or even tobacco as your yellow. Uh, for her, for your Grinch, this, this is a lighter lime green like this is a i have seen limer green but she also had that that other one did you see that other one that just showed up real fast hang on can i pause it okay that one that's made with like a mint green your customers especially if you sell home decor in light colors your that will match their home they are trying to decorate their home for christmas everything in their house is pastel colors but all they can find for Christmas stuff is lime green Grinches and fire engine red Santa Clauses. And that just clashes completely. But dun, da, 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 you have pastel Christmas decor in your shop. So keep that in mind. Um, Tara, I hope that was helpful. Let me see if we've got any questions coming in. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I think that's everything. Let me know if you guys want to talk about it further and we will. Thank you, Tara. Tara coming in hot with all the questions so we can actually have conversation today. Is it better to have a flat white or one color background on picks for Etsy or can they be lifestyle picks? Should your thumbnail be just a white background? Okay, Tara, good question. 
In, I talk about this in detail inside of Crochet Boss Academy, but there are seven types of photos that every single one of your Etsy listings needs. All seven of them need to be in every single Etsy listing. You get 10 photos for your Etsy listing. Used to, it was just five. They gave us 10 like four or five years ago. Um, so you should use them in a helpful way. Let me see if I can remember them off the top of my head. Studio shot, which would be your white background. And I like a white background because I think it helps it pop. And it helps be very um, obvious, like the de like the stitching, the colors, how the colors work together. I like a white background. So that's your studio shot. Then you have your detail shot, which is a close-up of something on your product. Something, um, let's see if I got it going on over here. I might not because um, I am in a season of business where I don't have to be perfect in order to get sales anymore. Used to, I did. Um, I'm going to open up one of my listings and see if I have any examples of these. That would be amazing if I did. It doesn't look like I've met this one anyway. Um, I will tell you though, let me share my screen again. Ah, oh, there we go. So this one right here, uh, my cover photo used to be uh the three this one that used to be my cover photo but i did research on etsy to look at other loveys from like sewing loveys uh mass produced and then they end up embordering them and this picture this layout was the layout the best selling one used so i did it also with the fur and the sideways i copied it and this one gets decent sales one review does that mean a pattern site review because on Etsy review, there's way more than that. So I guess you can leave a review, but it's not on your Etsy shop. It's going to be in your pattern site only. Interesting. Hang on. I feel like I have a bubble stuck in between my nose and my throat. It's uncomfortable. Okay. Um, that was just a little side note, though. Let me see if I've got an example. Um, if not, we can just go to Etsy.com and we can look at somebody else's shop. But so you need your studio shot, which is your white background, your detail shot, which is a close up of something specific that you you have. So if if you have a tag, a fancy tag on your product, maybe that's your close up shot. Um, this blanket, the close up shot could show the bobble texture, right? But it, I would need to be really super close. Um, the detail shot is really super close. And then you have the lifestyle shot, which is showing your product being used in the way it is intended, in the way that your ideal customer would like the most, in the way that makes sense for your listing. So I could make a list, if I sold this blanket, I could make a listing in my shop for throw blanket and show a picture of it on the edge of a couch, or I could make a picture of it for accent blanket, like blanket in a bedroom and show it at the end of a bed and show how I'm using this to decorate my bedroom. Um, and you can make different listings and the bedroom listing would be uh, master bedroom home decor keywords. And the throw blanket listing would be living room keywords or throw blanket keywords. Um, the, the, the throw blanket would be like something you use when you need to cover up. And the master bedroom blanket would be Decor purposes only. We don't touch this blanket. It just goes on the bed when the bed is clean. So you can sell the same blanket in multiple listings with multiple keywords that are grouped into themes to get more listings in your shop. But you need a livestock, livestock, live style shot. You need a group shot where you show multiples of the same thing. Now, I personally, as a consumer, think the group shot is a is a um, it always makes me buy the group shot is always the the nail in, in the coffin for me when i see a group of earrings laying together i always want to buy them another thing about the group shot is you can see all of the different colors in your shop you can see them next to one another because they might be i have some oh i have some better pictures for that listing i need to get up they might be trying to decide between two different colors and when they actually get to see them both next to each other, it helps them decide. It helps them decide which color that they want. Um, where is my, this one? There we go. So this is an example of a group shot. 
It's awfully big. Here we go. Group shot to show you all the different colors that are available in my shop. And the good news is if you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bag listings in your shop, because you should have them listed by color, all of your listings will have this picture in it. You could, if you wanted to, swap out the front picture, the front bag. So like this one would be for the pink bag and then I'd put it to the back and then the red one would be for the red in the group shot. Or you can just use this same group shot for every one of your listings to make it easier. Um, this would be a lifestyle shot showing Ava wearing one of the bags. This would be a studio shot. Let's see if I got a de detail shot. I mean, that one can kind of be a detail shot because it's zoomed in. But being zoomed, this one could be a detailed shot. Um, you could get a little closer though, like to the fringe or the texture to get a good detail, detail shot. I don't remember what number we're on, but there's seven of them total. Um, I posted about it all up on my Instagram. Um, hey, Sierra, I think we might have a spam person hanging out. I'm not sure. It looks a little spammy to me. Keep an eye on that one. Um, so group shot, lifestyle shot, studio shot. Close-up shot, the detail shot, the packaging shot. So if you sell, you could post a picture of your um, Bitty Boho bags being packaged up in the way that they would imagine it coming to their coming to their um, person. So let me see. Sometimes I, I have a packaging shot for my stickers because I do package them. Um, this, by the way, is fully, that is fully made on the internet. This is not a real picture. None of this is real that we made that. Um, I don't know if I've got a, which one of my things have a packaging shot. I know I've taken them before. Um, they're probably in my wild grace shop that doesn't exist anymore. But showing how the product will be packaged is a great shot to do. And then um, I can't remember the other ones. There's seven total, though. So you should have them in all of your listings. Let's go back to the question. Your thumbnail does not necessarily have to be um, the same. Let me go incognito. Let me go file the same photo. Now, I personally like it when my thumbnail photos coordinate with one another. Okay. They coordinate with one another. Let me see. Uh, window. This is this one. So we're just incognito right now. Um, and I'm going to click on this shop, or is that a shop or just a picture? Personalized gifts. Okay, and now I'm going to go into the shop. I just want to see what this shop's got going on. Gorgeous. I could tell by the picture it was going to be gorgeous. Okay, so let's look at what this shop has to offer. Um, their thumbnail photos are... are um, coordinating. They're coordinating with one another. These ones have pink backgrounds. These ones have are a bit of a group shot. This one has hands, no hands, more hands. Like it's they're different. Most of them have a clean background, even though they're all different. They're all some of them are like they're all clean, right? Like this is a clean green, this is a, a clean pink. This one has a little bit of texture, but it's still clean. You don't want anything in your thumb. That's cool. You don't want anything in your thumbnail photo. That's really pretty that would take attention away from your product. You don't want anything in any of your photos that will take attention away from your product, but especially the thumbnail photo, because you don't want people eye fighting for the thing that you sell. This one is excellent. Even the key, like this does not take away. This is very, very clear to me what they're selling, right? Very clear. Even though they got a coffee cup over here in the corner, it's very clear that this is for coasters. I knew this shop was going to be pretty as soon as I saw that one photo. I was like, let's click on this shop. Um, so all of their pictures are gorgeous, which is nice. This one is a lifestyle because it's showing the book behind there. Let's take a look at one of them and see how many of the types of photos they're they're using. Only, only two. That's not ideal. Maybe it's because it's Christmas. Let's go back to one of their best sellers. What was on the first page? A, over 20 people have this in their cart. Let's look at this one. So we've got the lifestyle shot, the studio shot, and maybe the packaging shot. Oh, size, a scale shot showing the size. 
So this also shows the size because you've got some human hands. Um, this one also, oh, this is very helpful to show how the photo, which lay out a photo that you're going for. That's very helpful. And then they have uh, special characters available if you need to. Why is that? Related searches? In the listing photo? What is this? Is that going to take me to Etsy.com? That's not ideal. That's not ideal at all. That has taken me directly out of their shop after I was already spending time scrolling through all the photos. And now I'm looking at all of the Etsy dog. That's not ideal. Okay. Um, don't love that. But I do love that these are some keywords that this person could be using. So let's, let's see if a crafty concept has that. And then it should say shop names. Yes. So let's go into one of my listings and see if it does that. A little search. Oh. Weird. Weird. Hey, oh, those are me. Me, 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 me. These are all me. Um, this one's nice because it shows the video. I don't know if it, I don't know why it does that. I don't pay for like the bougie Etsy. There's other Etsy, um, options for your etsy.com shop i have the free one um but if you i guess if you just upload a video it's gonna move yeah i can't i'm busy i'm i'm busy crocheting i like it i would like it but i'm not i'm on incognito um but if you post a video in your etsy listing which you should you should post a video in every single one of your etsy listings it's gonna start moving when they hover and that is eye catching that is a very uh cool thing that's happening but this right here, you could check your own shop and get more keywords because this is what Etsy is telling us is keywords based on this listing. Um, so that would be helpful. Uh, but having them here for people to click off of your thing is not helpful. I don't love that. Um, but what can you do? We are at the mercy of the Etsy when on Etsy and it's still absolutely worth the traffic. 100%. Oh, that's a pretty video. These are fun. I like that they started doing that. That's not very old. They've not done that for a very long time. This is fairly new. That needs a video. I need to make more videos. This one has a video. <gasps> is it just my my key? Just my favorites? Because this one has a video. See? Okay, so maybe when you're on my shop, it's just my favorited items. My my most you get your you get to pick like your key your key things um but if you're searching through search results like um this all of them start moving so you need to have a video in every single one of your listings we're learning all kinds of stuff okay um let me see okay so long and short it does not have to be the same photo for your thumbnail it looks nice to have a variety of photos that are all coordinating with one another, or you could um, make them exactly the same if you wanted to and see how you like that. I would I would be playing around on Etsy and look at other shops. So these ones, they're still not exactly the same. To me, exactly the same would be same background, same lighting. Like if every one of them looked like this, where you couldn't see this stuff behind here, if every one of them had this bright light, little oh, mushrooms. Um, that would be exactly the same. So they don't have to be exactly the same. They just need to be coordinating and then you'd be good to go. Okay, look at some chats over here. Yeah, I don't love it, but it's still worth it being on Etsy, I promise. If you upload a video, it makes that the, your thumbnail. N no, you still get to choose, Tara. You still get to choose which one your thumbnail is. Few weeks now for the video thing. I don't know if it's the video thing or the search thing. You need to get a baby, Christina. You need to get a baby. Uh, if you go to church, take your products to church and be like, after church, can I take a picture of this on your baby? You need to send free products to your friends with babies and say, hey, I'd love to give you this bib for free if you would give me some photos in return. The picture that I had of the baby wearing the bib and the girl wearing the um, bitty boho bag, those were taken by the mothers and they gave them to me. These mothers are photographers. 
This mother is a photographer. Her name is Kendra. And now I have these pictures forever, even though her kid is like three years old now. This, I did not have a baby when I designed this. This is another person's baby. They came to my house. I was like, would you like to come to my house? And I will take pictures of your baby wearing my bib. And then you can keep any of the bibs that you want. That's what we did. These are very old because they have this. I don't do this anymore. I don't do this anymore. And I don't, this needs to be updated. I need to update it ASAP. Um, bib listing. Because I have some gorgeous bib pictures from my photographer moms. Um, let me go back to the bag listing. That the picture of all my bags laying out together that we showed already. Um, this picture was from a friend. Same picture. This picture was taken from my photographer, who this is actually the same lady. Her name is Lakes is her last name. Amanda, she has two daughters now. Uh, when she had this one, she just had the one daughter. Um, but she took all of my product photography for Wild Grace. I was starting a new shop called Wild Grace. Um, and I quickly learned really fast that I cannot manage all of those things. So it is gone, but it's still used as an example inside of Crochet Boss Academy. I gave her all of my products. I gave her a list of the photos that I needed taken, the seven types of photos that every Etsy listing needs. I gave her that list and she took them for me and I have them forever. I paid her like 300 bucks. She only wanted 50. I was like, I'm not living that life. It's it's a tax write-off. I'm supporting another small business owner. I, that's fine with me. So I paid her for those. And now I have these pictures forever. She took all of them on this textured white background, which she made herself and I love. And I've wanted to do a YouTube video where we make one of these together for years. And I keep putting it off, but I need to make that a priority because it's just like spackle on a canvas and then you have it as your backdrop. Let me think of another picture that, another thing that she took pictures for was the Bitty Boho Bib. I can't remember. These pictures were taken. This girl, this is my friend who has a kid. She's got a toddler. I just have a big kid, right? She has a toddler. I sent her a bag. I let her choose. I was like, which bag do you like the best? And she sent, I sent it to her and she took all these pictures. She also got me some video footage that I can use as reels. If they take live photos, you can use those as video footage too. But look how cute she is. This is not my kid. This is not, I did not have a toddler. I gave, I shipped them this, I think. I might've dropped it off because she works in town. Um, but oftentimes I will ship it to them for free because I need the pictures. These pictures are priceless. I can use them in every area of my business. I can use them as marketing materials. I can use them as market props. I can use them for Pinterest images, Etsy images, my off Etsy shy images, YouTube video thumbnails, all of the things. I can use them everywhere. And I have these photos now. That's what you gotta do. You gotta get a lifestyle shot of a baby with your baby thing because on the internet we cannot touch look feel squeeze the stuff like we can in brick and mortar stores you have to do that for your customers tanner i asked you to scoot over i'm gonna run over your curly hair there's no reason for you to be so close adding these extra photos and videos will let you be the hands of your customers, the virtual hands, so they can get a better idea of what it would look like in their life. If they have to do too many mental gymnastics, they're not going to buy the thing. Also, they're gonna, there's a very high potential that they will be disappointed when they get the thing because they didn't visualize it correctly because you gave them very few photos to, to visualize off of. And when they get it, it's not what they thought they were getting and they leave you a poor review. So you need to have the lifestyle photos. It's very important. Um, if you don't have a baby, get a baby. I take them to church, take them to small group. I give them to friends. If you've got a photographer friend with babies, even better. If you've got a photographer friend that takes pictures of babies, but she doesn't have any babies, be like, hey, I'm going to give you these three bibs. If they happen to match any of the outfits of your clients coming up, would you see if they would mind snapping a couple photos for me to use in my shop? And you can create some sort of uh agreement if you need to. I haven't done that for any of mine. It's never came back to me as an issue. But if you're worried about it, Taylor would do it. Taylor would have all of her clients sign a piece of paper saying I have the rights to these pictures. Um, I just haven't done it. Okay. Okay. So she's talking about how Etsy... Hello, sorry. 
This is what I'm trying to do. So this comment is talking about how Etsy already shows different people's things. So I'm going to go back to incognito. Etsy. And she is correct. But my, my issue with the new thing is, let me see if I can't just share the screen here. So, yes, if I was to search up here, baby bib, and I'm scrolling through, and I see all these baby bibs. These are a ton of shops. Okay. Oh, I like this one. Let me click on it. And then, yes, that's their shop. And if you scroll down, these are from other shops. More from this shop. You may also like. These are from other shops. Yes, Etsy has always done this. This is part of being a marketplace. This is good service for the customer. Okay, it is. As a customer, it's nice to see if something else is tickling my fancy. My issue is if I like this bib and I'm scrolling because I'm like, this is gorgeous. This is a perfect bib. Oh, I love it. Which one am I going to get? I'm thinking about it. If I'm still on this listing, they got 10 photos. I'm still hanging out here. I'm still hanging out here scrolling through. This is very not common. If that If the person is hanging out this long, the chances of them buying are very good. And then I get to this. And I think, oh, I am looking for a baby gift. And then there, boom, I'm out of that shop. I'm out of that shop. Like there, that shop is again. But that's, that's the, <laughs> oh, somebody crochet one of these. Connect a clear, one of, one of my headbands. Oh my gosh. New product idea right here. 40 bucks for this. <laughs> okay. That's a fun thing. This is fun. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh my, did you see that E? Look how beautiful that is. Okay, that's my issue, is I've already spent two solid minutes scrolling through your pictures because I am like in love with this bib and then all of a sudden I get distracted. It's not ideal. Honestly, that's not even good service from for Etsy to do for the consumer because they, they're not looking for words. They're looking for pictures when they're in the pictures. I don't love it, but it's not up to me. I don't get to choose. Um, but it is giving me excellent keywords. And if you're doing keyword research for crochet beanie, and I'm looking at one that says 20 people have in their cart, I'm going to do crochet beanie pattern because I'm a pattern seller. And I'm looking for one that says 20 people have in their cart. Nobody, nobody has beanies in their carts right now. What's hot right now? What is this, July? Why isn't, why is it? Maybe it's because I'm incognito. Used to, it would say, like if I went to my shop right now, it would say 10 people have this in their cart. Five people have this in their cart. Okay. So we're going to go crochet beanie pattern. We're going to go to filters. We're going to click on Etsy. No, we're going to click on star seller, star seller. We're going to click apply. Here's a little trick for you. We're going to go up here to the URL where it says they've changed it. Used to, you could change these words to best seller and it would work, but it's not working anymore. I don't think, I mean, maybe. Bestseller. Okay, this one's a bestseller. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go all the way down to this one, and boom, I now have some keywords that I can use in my crochet beanie pattern listing to get more sales. Go-to beanie, I would have never, what is that? Is that what she named hers? The go-to beanie. I think that's what she named hers. Um, that I wouldn't use a keyword that is another shop owner's product name. I would not do that. Um, but if it wasn't a product name, if it was like winter hat and I didn't think to use winter hat, then I could use it. So that is somehow, that is a way that we can use this feature to get more keywords for our shop. So you, you give and you take, I guess. Okay. Got to be logged in to see the cart thing. That makes sense. Use them as keywords in your listings. 100%. One, if Etsy is showing them in your own listing as good keywords, you should be using those keywords in your own listing. So keywords, keyword research just got a lot easier with that little magnifying, um, little magnifying glass option. Okay, we got some more questions. Uh, any, I make mostly baby stuff and home decor. Any thoughts on what I can do for fall? I already have pumpkin baby hats and pillows. Any other ideas? Well, let's go look at my blog. A craftyconcept.com forward slash free patterns. <clears throat> that is not the right, that is not the right window. Mm, this is the right window. Okay, I'm going to remove your comment. 
So we're looking for baby stuff and home decor for fall. Um, this in fall colors, it's a baby rattle. Boom. This in fall colors, it's a lovey made on the knitting machine. This in fall colors, this in fall colors. Um, these, this has a baby size, all of the baby sizes, blankets, slippers. I have these in all sizes, toddler through adult male. This is the Santa slipper with the friend with the faux fur, but I, I have plain ones also perfect for fall. Everybody loves slippers. The pumpkin Addy bear. You can also do the crocheted version. If you need to, you just make a circle. Um, pumpkin wall hanger. Headbands are great for fall. Beanies are great for fall. Fall colored rainbow uh, bitty boho bags. There's the crochet daddy bear version. Um, you can make the daisy blanket with sunflowers instead of daisies, just changing the colors. Uh, so make the middle brown and make the petals yellow, and then you got yourself a sunflower. Um, Placemats could be good for fall home decor. Pumpkins all the time. Every, people always love pumpkins. Sets of pumpkins do really well. This is an owl puppet. That gives me fall vibes. Um, bitty boho bags in fall colors. You could make these in fall colors. Maybe instead of a heart, you do a pumpkin. If you can change the graph yourself, this is a dish towel. Um, you could do this in fall, fall rainbow colors. This is a plant coast plant thingy to catch like the water, but you could also use it as a placemat for a round table baskets always if you want to promote a basket for a nursery then you put baby things in the basket for your lifestyle photo and show how this is great for your nursery this blanket in fall colors would be super fun hanging baskets this little pumpkin hair clip pumpkin beanie um <clears throat> bibs in fall colors for baby things Ava bunnies in fall colors for baby things. This one comes in a toddler size. So a little toddler headband for fall. Mommy and me sets could be fun for fall. Uh, you could start selling your Christmas stuff in the fall. All your Christmas stuff you can start doing. Uh, bags. Uh, this one's fall with the candy corn. This one's fall with the Halloween. Earrings, uh, no, you said home decor and baby stuff, so not for that. Uh, a fall floral wall hanger with some gorgeous fall colored flowers. That's a baby rattle, perfect for fall. There's the slippers for all the sizes. Another pillow, another pumpkin. Um, this is a rug. These are the baby sizes of the Claire Bun beanies, or Claire beanies, not, not bun. Perfect. Lots of fun options at a craftyconcept.com forward slash Free patterns. Next question says, opened my Etsy store, linked my square, and did an in-person event that counted as Etsy sales. Next day, had a reserved payment on my account due to increased traffic. What now? Is so that's probably because your shop is new. If your shop is new, they put a hold on it. And let me tell you why. In 2020, people started opening Etsy shops every single day by the hundreds to sell masks. Then they took all these thousands of dollars, closed their Etsy shop, never sent out any masks. It was a big problem. So bad people is why they put holds on our Etsy shops. Not Etsy. Etsy is not bad. The people are bad. And they, because of their bad actions, we new Etsy shop owners now have to face the consequences. So they will put a hold on your account. Keep reaching out to support every other day until they fix it. Sometimes it can take up to three weeks, which is unbelievably aggravating. I know most of the time it's just a couple days, um, but Etsy is trying to make sure you are a real person and you are not stealing people's money. And the fact that you got a ton of sales in one day at your market, set up a red flag for them and they are worried that you're stealing people's money. So keep reaching out to them. Let them know you had a market. That's why you had so many sales. Yada, yada, yada. Keep reaching out to support. It's aggravating. It will only be one time. It should never happen again. It's only at the beginning of your opening your shop that it does happen. So word to the wise. If you've got shops, if you've got markets coming up in October, open your Etsy shop right now and start getting sales right now. So your shop will get, if it gets freezed, it will be now, 
not in October when you're at a market. And you can also go, get through the freeze and then start getting regular sales here and there to let Etsy know that you are not faking it out. You are a real person making real sales and sending real products. Every time you ship something, Etsy's going to get a give you a green check in the this is not fraud box. Um, so word like do that. Do that now. If you've got markets coming up in October, open your shop now so you can be prepared. Do you have a pattern for the earrings you're wearing? I do not. These are macrame. Have you seen the app where you take a picture of your product and it gives you the instant background and it makes it look real? I have seen stuff like that before. Um, and I played with it. I can't remember which one it was. It might have been on Canva. I think maybe Canva. Because Canva has a background remover, I know for sure. Um, but I think they had some sort of product. I know I'm not showing my screen. I'm trying to look this up real quick. But I think Canva had some sort of product photography helping thing. Uh, they got mock-ups, which I did know. Sometimes I find new apps for Canva all the time. Um, I would, you could try it. And if it works well for you, that's fine. But if it looks cho choppy or fake, it's not going to sell good. Um, with other things like a cell phone, it would work fine because it's a square. It's metal. It's, but with this, it's not going to work fine. It's not going to get around all that texture. I would, I would try it and then not use it if it looks anything less than perfect. Um, thank you for your question. Last one says, is there any color palette you feel would be good for a baby nursery or could we make any palette work? You can make any palette work. You can make any palette work. Um, if, if there is, if, if there's a color palette, somebody likes that color palette. Now, should you use trendy color palettes? If you use trendy color palettes, you're going to be more likely to catch the eye of people who like those color palettes, right? But also you're going to have more competition. More people are going to be using that color palette. Um, I would, you need to figure out what your ideal customer is doing. Look at the person in your life that you think you could sell your things to really well. And how is she decorating her home? How is she dressing her kids? What types of toys is she buying? What colors is she sticking with? And go off of that. And my friend who took pictures of the bunny backpack is all about the neutrals and um, a few pops of color, maybe like terracotta and um, like rust or olive. You know what I mean? So I would go with like boho colors for her. Um, but other people, my friend Brooke has a very eclectic home and she uses, I'm going to say rich colors. I don't want to say bright because it's not bright, like, like tropical, but it's rich, like teal, like dark teal and, um, rich, deep pink, kind of like this, but a little bit like the deeper parts of this. Um, that's how she, so dual tones, neutrals, like tans, beige, cream, um, pastels, and you can go to Pinterest.com. Just a second. Ugh. Baby nursery color palette. I'm just searching. Stop it. That's nasty. Baby nursery color palette. Um, let's share my screen. Oh my goodness. I hate it when I do that. Where is it? This one? Okay. Baby nursery color palette is what I typed into Pinterest. And now we can scroll until we find one that tickles our fancy. And then you can also stick with that color family. So this palette here is only those few colors, but this is a very muted rainbow color family. So if you needed to add blue into this, if you want one color of like one color of all the different colors of the rainbow, stick with the color family. So we're going to call this one Muted Rainbow. This one is so a crafty concept. That's probably why it's showing it to me. Uh, sage green, dark sage. These, these are crafty concept colors. Uh, these are crafty concept colors. we got to get out of a crafty concept color. So that is not going to be helpful for you. So we're going to go back here to the Baby Nursery Color Palette. We're going to find one. I like this one with the terracotta and the rust. I just said that. Is listening to me. Um, you can also like, if you liked this chair. If you liked this chair. Rifle Paper Company. I just bought Rifle Paper Company shoes last night. I'm not kidding. 
I will show them on Instagram if somebody will text me on Instagram and remind me. But say that you were like, that, that is my chair. That is the chair that I want to be my brand. We're going to take a picture of it. Screenshot. And we're going to go over here. To, oh, there it is. I took a screenshot of this chair. I opened up the link. Took a screenshot. I don't know if it showed it or not. Now we're going to go to Canva. You're probably going to see some sneak peeks. We're going to click on just this little sticker. We're going to scroll down to a blank page. And I'm going to take that screenshot that I just took. And I'm going to drop it into Canva. Now that picture is in Canva. Uploading in Canva. Now we're going to add element. We're going to add a circle. Okay. And I'm going to add a bunch. Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V. And let's do one more. Control V. We've got all these circles. Okay. Now we are going to change the color of this circle. Boop. There are the main colors in that chair. So we're pulling out the colors in that chair because we love that chair. And that is what we want to represent our brand. And you've got this, this pretty, well, that's probably the background of the chair. Um, so we're not going to use that. We're going to go up here. We're going to click this plus button. We're going to click this dropper. And now we're going to be hovering over this chair. We didn't get this purple. We didn't get this pretty pink. Okay. Maybe we want to get more colors. Control C, Control V, hover over. Get some more of these colors. There's a blue up there. Look at this. Now we can pull all of, oh, okay. Thank you, Sierra. Let's redo it. Let's redo it. Sierra's my, my queen over here. Okay, we uploaded the picture into Canva. And then I just clicked and dragged. And then here it is. It uploaded. And then there it is. And then we're going to go elements. And we're going to click on the circle. We'll make it a little bit smaller. And then we're going to copy and paste it a bunch of times. So we feel like we had a whole bunch. And then we're going to pull out the colors from this chair. Sorry, you know how frustrated that makes me. Okay, we're going to click this square here to change the color. And then bada boom, bada bing, here are the main colors from this picture that Canva has pulled out. Like these, these five colors show up in this picture more than any other color. So we're going to stick with these colors here for... We're going to grab these colors. We're, eight, we're not going to grab that linen because that's the background of the chair. And then to get the other colors, we're going to click this plus sign. We're going to click this dropper. We're going to hover and find the colors that we want. So there's a pretty bright pink. We're going to hover. There's a purple. If you're into purple, we're going to hover. What else we got? We got blue up here, a little pop of that blue. And then now you've got yourself a color palette from the picture that you were obsessed with because you saw it on um, Canva. Sorry, guys. Um, hopefully that was helpful, though. And now, and now you have these colors that you can use in your business. I'm not digging this color. It looks like it's a really dark red. Yeah, let's, let's just um, maybe there we go. Let's do that. Okay. Um, and then you have these colors that you can use in your business. Now you could find yarn that match these colors. You could build a branding board with these colors, which is inside of Crochet Boss Academy, uh, module two, if you guys are already in there and wanna check that out, this is how you can do that. Um, so I would suggest going to Pinterest and typing in the color palette that you need. Maybe you didn't want baby nursery, maybe you wanted kitchen, maybe you wanted modern kitchen color palettes. And they're gonna give you some options. Okay, it's going to help you if you are like me and have zero style. I have zero style, but I can copy other people's style, no problem. I can pull things apart. Like I can look at a picture and, and figure out why it looks good and then rep replicate that in my business. This is a fun color palette right here. Um, but I can't just do it on my own because I have zero style. This is showing up because I pinned this the other day to my new house board. I have this pinned is why it showed up. Look at all, this bright orange. How fun is that? Maybe you look for, um, look at that little flamingo holder. Cute. Look at this wallpaper. This would be a fun, share this tab instead. This would be a fun color palette to grab. Look at those pretty colors. Go post it up in Canva, get the pictures. But be careful with the shading here um, because like this color is going to, this color is going to be different than this color in this picture because they're shading, even though those are the exact same color. So I would stick with this chunk right here that's in good lighting and pull your pictures from there. You could even crop it. Crop it down to where you only see these. That way Canva only pulls from here if you wanted to. Okay. I love Canva. 
Canva is my favorite tool, hands down. Okay, uh, Christine, I hope that was helpful. For your color palette, should you stick to one brand of yarn for those colors? Heather, that's not necessarily important. I like to use one brand for ease, but it's not a deal breaker. Now you want to stick to similar yarns for sure. You do not want to use high quality red, blue, and black and then poor quality green. And then somebody order a red hat and a green hat and they get a good red hat and a crap green hat. You do not want to do that. Like if you were using Red, uh, red Heart Super Saver Red and then Yarn Be Soft and Sleek for all of your other colors, they're going to know that that red was less expensive when they get all the... Imagine they're buying all the things, okay? And then choose your colors from there. Um, I love Hobby Lobby's yarn. Yarn Bee is my favorite brand, but then I love this yarn. I love this cotton. Also has gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Yarn Bee is all about the boho... Um, muted rainbow situation and then you've got the yarn bee like baby which is your pastels so i i like yarn bee i like i love this yarn those are my go-to um but if you're making baskets you're gonna need to use something like this so maybe you sell baskets and baby bibs your basket yarn is not going to be the same as your cotton for your baby bib but you can make them look good together do I have any I love this cotton? This is it. Okay. So this is I love this cotton in the color warm blush. You could get away with that. There's another one called rose that I don't think I have, but it might be closer to this basket. So I would, I hope you can hear me. I would take your yarn to Hobby Lobby or wherever you buy more yarn and compare. If you had to make your baskets with this Hobie yarn, um, Hobie Bungie or something is how it's, this is my favorite yarn for baskets. My favorite. I got all kinds of it. Here's another one. Ugh. This is a green. And then there's also, a, <clears throat> I have like a burgundy. So a crafty concept. I'm obsessed with it. Um, if I needed to find cotton, I would take these to Hobby Lobby with me and I would be comparing them to my cotton. I would be looking at them and I would be setting them down and I would walk away and I would look at them and I would set two different ones next to it, one on each side, and I would see which one I liked better. And then I would do the same for the pink. And then I would put the two cottons that I chose next to each other and make sure they look pretty. That's what I would do. But obviously you cannot use this yarn to make a baby big. That bib, that would be super chunky. Hope that was helpful, Heather. Thank you for your question. Um, next one is Cheryl, and she says, loved your review of the yarns Timu offers. Have you thought about doing a review for crochet hooks they sell? I have thought about it, and this is how much I've thought about it. Let me show you how much I've thought about it. I bought a pack. Um, I haven't even, I haven't even tried using these yet, but I did buy a pack. Let's grab some yarn. I will say, every time I post about the Timu yarn, I get a handful of comments and DMs telling me that Timu is the devil. And I should not promote them on my channel. I get that regularly. Um, but you know what? Amazon's the devil. Ian is the devil. Walmart's the devil. They're all the devil. It's all corrupt. It's all nasty. It's all bad. Different kinds of bad, but it's all bad. Um, so I would have to only make my own yarn from sheep that I grow here on my property. I don't even have any sheep. Um, but that's the only way to get yarn that is not from a company that is bad. It's all bad. Um, the world we live in is bad. We live in a very sinful, bad world. It's all bad. But let's try this hook together. Um, I wanted to see how it compared to Clover Amore. Everybody knows, if you've ever seen any of my videos ever, you know I'm a Clover Amore girl, hands down. Best hooks on the planet probably depends on how you hold your hook. Um, I hold mine weird. So let's see. Okay, let's just give it a little go here. Okay, no, <laughs> no, if you, mm -mm, nope, this is horrible compared, it is almost like sandpaper compared to Clover Amore. Nothing compares to Clover Amore. This is sticking, it's grabbing, it's making a, like a feeling on my fingers when I'm using it. Get in there. It's really like, almost like scraping I don't love it, but if red is one of your colors or like this dark red, 
they would make excellent photo props because I can tell you what's not my color, the rainbow. And that's what all my Clover more are like bright, almost like, um, almost like primary colors. Like these are the colors of Clover more. These are not a crafty concept colors. Even the pink and the green. Like this is not, this is not my jam. And you need pictures and videos that you do with your hooks in them can be a good photo prop. So I have these that I use sometimes that I don't crochet with, but I use them for pictures. And then I have, let me just, let me just pull out. And then I have these that I got from Sorella. Also, I mean, they're the same quality as this hook right here. They're the same quality, like the same metal. They're cute because it's like a champagne colored. They're very cute, but they are not Clover Amore. Once you Clover Amore, can use no other hooks no more. Just made that up. Um, so there's there's a quick little review. I'm, I'm gonna go with like five out of ten because obviously it works. Uh, but if you compare it to Clover and more, nothing is nothing can compare. Sierra, if you want to pop up an affiliate link for Clover and more hooks, um, if it's a quick grab, if it's not a quick grab, you can go to a craftyconcept.com forward slash Amazon and then go to Crochet Essentials. And I've got all the Clover and more hooks right there. If you've never used one before, buy yourself just one. Buy yourself just one and feel the difference and then come back and let me know because it will change your life. You will be like, how was I crocheting with this stick when I could have been crocheting with this glorious, silky smooth, buttery soft, perfect, perfect metal? Oh, we got a couple more. Oh, um, this one says, I know you do affiliate marketing. Do we need to have a large following to do that? Nope. Nope, not at all. Um to get able to sign up. Somebody probably asking me to vote. Um, to get able to sign up, you have to sometimes have a large following, depending upon the platform. Um, but everybody's got their own thresholds. Um, so you'd have to look that up per company. And I don't remember the threshold for Amazon because I did it like six years ago. And Taylor basically did it for me. Like I just did the steps that she told me to do. Um, so I'm not sure on the, it depends on the company and how, what their requirements are. Um, so I shouldn't have said no. I should have just said, I'm not sure. <clears throat> See her coming in hot, telling me my canvas stuff wasn't showing up. I'm sorry about that. Okay. That's all the questions. She's got Clover more and she loves them. Dots hooks. I've never tried dots hooks before. Clover more, nothing alike. Trying to sell, you're talking about Timu hooks or Clover and More hooks? Yeah, the replay would be there, Amanda. Sorry, it was quick. Ooh, Frosty Fall. That's fun. Let's see. Let's go to um, back over here to Pinterest. Let's type in Frosty Fall color. I don't know how to spell palette. Colors. It wasn't auto feeling like it did before. Uh, this one, share this tab instead. And this, nope, I hate this. I think it's this one. Is that right? Okay, so these might be frosty fall colors right here. I'm not sure what would consider frosty fall. Um, but I would, I would take a color chart like if this if this was your frost, frosty fall, I would print this out and I would take it to Hobby Lobby and I would look at the yarns and see which ones I could find. That's what I would do. There might be some sort of generator that would be cool, like a yarn generator where you put in the you put in the color and it shows you which yarn matches that. That could be cool. This is very pretty. Is that a bird in real life? Is that a real life bird with pink and the orange? That can't be real. I want that bird to be my bird. That is gorgeous. Look how gorgeous these colors are. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love, I love it. These, these are really tickling my fancy. This color palette, teal, all this. I love this. Okay. That is everything. Friends, we are all caught up. Perfect. I, um, I don't think I've ever used foresty. I thought you said frosty. Um, I don't think I've ever used tulip hooks unless these are tulips. Are these, are these tulip? If these are tulip, I know tulip has red, <clears throat> but I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever tried them before. 
<clears throat> oh, hi, there we go. Okay, friends, that is all for today. Thanks for hanging out. Let's check our poll. Let's check our poll one more time. <clears throat> My voice is um, upset with me because of VBS and talking all week. And apparently in your 30s, it's not as much fun for your throat, throat hole. Um, 26 votes. The cactus purse is winning. So I'm going to share this on like Facebook and stuff and see if we can't get some more votes. Uh, we talked about it at the beginning of the video. If you missed the beginning, you can check it out in the replay. But we were trying to decide which pattern I should release next. Um, and the vote, the poll is on my YouTube channel under the community tab. Okay, we are way past an hour. Thank you for being here. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time. Same time, same place. 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, the second Wednesday in August will be no Ask Ashley, August 9th. No Ask Ashley on August 9th. So next week is our first, um, it'll be on August 2nd. And then on August 9th, we will skip. And then the rest of August, 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, I'll let you guys go. Have a good day. Bye.